Years ago, I still remember, final Thursday in November, I was in my kitchen cooking food to rival feasts of yore. To and fro, sacheting, hopping, slicing, dicing, mincing, chopping, dish by dish, no time for stopping, for so daunting was the chore. Playing hostess for Thanksgiving, such a monumental chore I had never faced before. Busying myself with basting, reading recipes and tasting, I was filled with gratitude for all the things that I adore. Blithely counting every blessing, I prepared some cornbread dressing, barely wondering, never guessing what the future had in store. Thankful for both past and present, what the future had in store on this day I could ignore. When at last I'd finished baking, how my lower back was aching, yet my heart was filled with gladness and my face a smile wore. After hours of preparation, it was time for celebration, and with great anticipation I received folks at the door. Jubilant anticipation as I opened wide the door to the guests I'd labored for. Round the table, bright and perky, we all dined on roasted turkey, squash, potatoes, stuffing, gravy, bread, and casseroles galore. Soon our appetites were slowing. Nonetheless, we kept on going, in our swelling bellies stowing two desserts or three or four. So much succulent dessert, we had to eat like three or four, till our stomachs were quite sore. Then all those who still were able helped me, clearing off the table, bringing back into the kitchen ample leftovers to store. Next, what could be fitter closing than to celebrate by dozing? Soon the guests were all reposing on the sofas and the floor, nodding, napping, sweetly dreaming on the sofas and the floor. Who could ever ask for more? This I pondered, reminiscing. Not one thing desired was missing. Such abundance chased away the slightest thought of being poor. Suddenly I had the notion there was something still in motion, mid the softly slumbering ocean and its low collective roar. Yes, I thought I'd heard a noise above the low collective roar that was not just one more snore. Then most clearly something rustled. To my feet I leaped and hustled, or I tried to hustle rather, dodging dreamers on the floor. To the kitchen quickly bounding, stopping short with heart a pounding, when I spied the most astounding sight before my icebox door. An enormous turkey vulture tugging at my icebox door was the sound I'd heard before. Ah, uh, this bird was sure no craven, outsized any crow or raven that had ever fluttered through the grandest poetry of yore. Wasting not a moment perching, awkwardly the thing was lurching through my kitchen, bobbing, searching for some carcasses to score. Just a bold, brash buzzard seeking some fresh carcasses to score. Or perhaps a petit four? Bothered by this home invasion, loath to let it spoil the occasion, such were my conflicting feelings as I viewed the brutish boar. So I mustered up some caring, genuine, unselfish sharing for this feathered fowl whose daring search had brought it to implore, this vile vulture which had come some light refreshment to implore. How could I his plight ignore? There he stood, his feathers puffing, watching as I served him stuffing, bones and giblets heaped together to re resemble natural gore. And when I had finished styling thus the food that I was piling, I could swear the bird was smiling as he ravenously tore, with a shocking lack of manners through those turkey scraps he tore. Then that beast said, give me more. Please and thank you, bird, I grumbled, and some more choice words I mumbled, but the creature quite unflustered could not grasp why I was sore. Then ere I had finished scolding, that large vulture wings unfolding offered me what he'd been holding, dumped it rather on the floor. Ads and flyers, discounts, coupons scattered there upon my floor with their message, give me more. Such obnoxious advertising on this day was most surprising. This day set apart for saying all that we are thankful for. Every miracle of science, every gadget and appliance, dazzling in their defiance of my gladness heretofore. Countless items challenging the gladness I had heretofore, whispering to me, give me more. Shocked into dissatisfaction, yet ashamed of my reaction, paralyzed I stood and ogled ads from every shop and store. 
till a drowsy guest, half waking from the nap that she was taking, spoke the wretched silence breaking, spoke the words that could restore. Though she murmured, still half sleeping, yet my sense she could restore. Thanks, she sighed, I need no more. Uttered out of peaceful dreaming, welcome words like beacons beaming, shining, scattering the darkness of the greed I so abhor. This is more than I can swallow, having things but feeling hollow. Out they go and you will follow, said I as each ad I tore. Each and every advertisement littering my floor I tore. Still the bird croaked, give me more. Beastly bird, now I was yelling, I don't want a thing you're selling. I'm quite satisfied, I tell you, I am happy to the core. All this junk, although you love it, I am in no mood to covet. You can take your greed and shove it. You're becoming quite a bore. And that rude red-headed buzzard, who was really quite a bore, yet protested, give me more. Liar, howled I, foul deceiver, and I wildly waved my cleaver. Take your greedy gimme gospel to some far off distant shore. I am through with being bullied. Leave my happiness unsullied. Disappear from my life fully. Darken nevermore my door. Take your greed from out my house and take yourself out through my door. Bring your gimme more, no more. Only thus, with threats and shouting and some fierce invective spouting, did I manage to escort the feathered felon out the door. Rid of his repulsive squealing, my attention turned to healing and recovering the feeling of contentment from before. All the peace and satisfaction that was filling me before he first grunted, gimme more. Off he flew into the morrow, luring, luring folks to spend and borrow. So this holiday I merely, nearly managed to restore. Ever since, it's most appalling. Once a year the bird comes calling, and its flight on Friday falling clouds the day we're thankful for. Yes, its evil shadow falling back on all we're thankful for shall be lifted nevermore.